Hello friends, once again I welcome you to my channel and in my computer organization architecture videos, the last video was on addressing mode where we have discussed uh, that register indirect mode and your memory indirect mode, right? And most importantly there we have seen the number of memory references for your uh, various type of instructions. That part is clear. Next we'll be moving to another one more important addressing mode that is called as index addressing mode right in case of index addressing mode your data will be there in the memory right data will be there in memory means your operand is in memory but whose address will be the sum of offset and your content of a index register what it is let me explain see address of your operand is called as what effective address in my last video i have told you so effective address means address of the operand so address of the operand will be what content of a register and your what is that offset this two will be added to get the address of your operand who will do the addition operation alu can do the addition operation where is this register inside the cpu so see here i have written ri because we are not doing for a specific processor so we can use the content of a general purpose register as an index register for some processors, you have dedicated registers used as an index register. Like um, some index registers are there, base registers are there. They are used to hold up that base address. And offset means what? It is one number. This number in the offset, another name is displacement. This offset or displacement will be there in one part of your instruction. When you are executing one instruction, instruction is there in IR. One part is your opcode, of, absolutely you know that. One part of your instruction will be having your offset, right? Offset. So this offset will add with the content of your register to get the address of your operand, right? And any register, in as of now, we are using any general purpose register to hold the index value. But for some processes, dedicated registers are there. Now the point is, what is offset? Or your another synonym for offset is what? Displacement. And it is called as relative displacement. What does it mean? Relative displacement. That means at some point you are there. From that point, how far your data is located? You are at suppose this location. From this location, how far your data is there in memory? that particular distance is called as displacement right displacement data may be here or data may be here also right so displacement means meaning is how far it is located from the uh, that reference point so with respect to this reference point how far it is located because of that it is called as relative right relative displacement displacement value may be positive number may be a negative number because if it is 1000 then it may be 900 or it may it may be 900 or it may be 2000 right so displacement can be both positive and negative that means it is a signed value right it is a signed number right so what it indicates from the base from the reference point how far we are located and the value of this base means what is my base point that value will be there in the index register here we are using one general purpose register to hold the value of index right so next is one example we have taken see this is how we are going to represent one operand which is represented using index mode index mode there are two parts will be there in case of index mode one is offset another is your register where is your register register is in cpu so register is in cpu 20 is part of your ir so to get the address of the operand only you need to perform one addition operation. Who will do that? ALU will do that. Where is ALU? Inside the CPU. The overall story is that to get the effective address of your operand, you need not have to go to memory. You can manage it within your CPU only. Now, after getting the effective address, you need to get the operand to perform the operation. So to get the operand from memory, we need to go to memory. That is one memory reference is required right so what this instruction is doing already it is written in the comment part what it is doing from memory we are get this is my source this is my destination this is my source 
So from here, I'm moving data to R2. Where is your data? Data is in memory. So what is the address of that memory offering? Content of register R1 and the value 20. 20 is there as part of your instruction. So both of them will be adding and we are going to get our effective address. At this address, we'll get our data. And that data is moved to register R2. Hope this one is clear. So effective address generation, in the effective address generation, index register content is not modified. Yes, you need to remember this. It is only used in the process. Index register, suppose it was holding 1000. So it will hold 1000. Only one new value, that is the result of summation of this register content and the offset will be used as an address. But R1, whatever it is holding, it will be there as it is. So we need to remember as part of your address generation, in case of index mode, we are not going to change the value of the index register. This is there. So diagrammatically, how, how we can represent it? See, register R1 is there. R1 is holding one number. That number is representing my base address. That means from this address, how far my data is located in memory. So in my instruction, offset is given as 20. So from 1000 at location 20, our data can be there, right? Our data will be there. So our address of our operand will be what? Content of this register plus this 20. What is that? 1020. One, at address 1020, you will be getting your data. And that data we need to move to register R2. So the after the execution of this instruction, for this given scenario, the value of R2 will be 78. Hope this part is clear. Now, okay, we'll quickly find out how many memory references we will require for this instruction. So how many memory references we require? See, one is obvious. That is for what? That is for fetching the instruction. Now, once you fetch the instruction, instruction is there in IR. So one part of it will give me the offset or displacement. And where is this register R1? It is there inside CPU. So both of them I will add by the ALU. Then one address will be produced. That address will be loaded in MAR. Memory cycle will be initiated. Data will come in MDR. And that data will be moved to register R2. So during that whole process, I have referred to the memory one more time. So as a whole, two memory references are required. See, number of memory references, it is two. Fine. Next, see. If you change the order, whether the number of memory references will change? No. If I write R2 here and I write 20 R1 here, then also it will be true. But if it is add, if it is add, add R2, 20 R1, then how many memory references will take? This is one memory operand. It is in dual role. So it will take three memory references, one for fetch, one for getting the data from this location and one for writing the result back to this location. Total is three. So hope this one is clear. Now next is, next point is, okay, we have understood the syntax of index mode, how to calculate the address and what is the process of address generation and all. That part is clear. Number of memory references is also clear. But the most important point is when we would like when we will write assembly language coding, when to use the index addressing mode. That should be clear in our mind. So suppose one the typical example is there. Suppose we have got in our class, suppose we have got n number of students. That n may be 20, 30, 40, whatever. Say 70 number of students are there in our class. So for 70 number of students, we have some data stored one after the another, right? It is similar to array of structure. So 70 student data is there in memory and one student data consists of student ID, then the marks he or she has obtained in test one, then test two, test three. So this part is representing data for one student. Next part is representing data for next student and so on. Total n number of students data are there in the memory. Now this is how the data is stored in the memory. Now we need to process this data. So what basically I wanted to do is, I want to calculate what is the average of test one. 
so for that what i have to do i need to find the summation of the marks of all the students of test 1 right so see my student roll number is or id is stored in this memory location then next data is stored at list plus 4 so see this is a symbolic name say this is 1000 then at 1004 your marks of test 1 is there 1008 next marks is there 1000 what is that 1012 next uh, marks test 3 marks is there then next student data my next student data will start at memory location 1016 now the point is why i am taking 44 here my assumption is that my machine is byte addressable that means with one location we are associating one byte and my one data consists of one word and my word length is 4 bytes that means the whole one word will occupy four memory locations so one word will occupy four locations i am having how many words for a student four words one is his or her id then marks in three test so if the id is at 1000 then test one marks will be 1004 1008 1012 and so on right so this is how the layout is there in memory right now the point is we need to use it while doing the coding right we need to use this marks in test one for student one then next student then again student id then here i will get the marks of next student in test one so these all the marks i need to add then test two marks also i need to add in another variable test three marks also we need to process so that time we need to use index addressing mode because relative to the beginning of the student data how far the test marks are there so student data is suppose starting here at offset 4 means from here at distance 4 my test one marks will be there from this beginning at distance 8 my second marks is there at distance 12 my next to next test marks are there and the same thing is applicable for all my n students so whenever this is there then we can use index addressing mode so if the first student data is stored at memory location 1000 then where i will get the data of next student at 1016 so in my next video i am going to take up one program where we will be using this index addressing mode that time it will become much more clear thank you